So uh, this week, Swinney takes a good look at the latest EXE Create RPG, which is a deck building kind of roguelike. Hmm. Mm. Tell us about it. Yeah, so I talked a little bit about this last week over Rogue. I tried to make a bad joke that you guys didn't fall for by putting Slay the Spire <laughs> in, in the run sheet of games I've been playing. Because Did you play this that game? game? I did actually play a little, oh, little bit of Slay the Spire this week to kind of Why just... Why wasn't it in the intro? Because I'm talking about it now, Mike. Let well, me finish it my sentence. Be in the intro, it would be in the banter. And the because <laughs> I wanted to just see how close the actual like systems were and how much it directly lifted from games like Slay the Spire. Um, so, look, this, as you mentioned, this is kind of like... This is the first DXC Create game I've played, and it's pu published by Chemco, that isn't like a straightforward JRPG. It's really its own thing, as you said, where it's mixing that deck-building Slay the Spire-style game with their classic JRPG-style trappings and context. And honestly, it works really well. Like this, this game I think is is absolutely fantastic. It's one of the the games they've made. I think would probably appeal to the most, you know, like to let's say there are other RPGs. I know the kind of people that would like them, right? And it's a it's a pretty niche group of people. Whereas I think this has more of a broader appeal because of the gameplay style. So, mm -hmm. but how, what is this game in terms of like the gameplay loop and everything? So. You start off, it's like a regular RPG. You're moving your character around. You're talking to NPCs. You've got like maps and everything. So it's not like just a menu. You're actually, it's actually an RPG you're exploring around. Um, and as you play through the story, your characters enter labyrinths. So that's basically the, the runs where um, it's basically a series of battles and events and shops where, you know, you can choose which path you want to take through the different floors and each floor has a boss. And then at the end, let's say if the labyrinth has three floors, you beat it. And then, you know, you, you go back and you continue on the story. So when you enter the battles, and this is where the comparison stunning like Slay the Spire really come into play, is that essentially you've got five cards and you start off with a basic deck um, and it's randomized, you know, like it's randomized from a standard deck. And as you win battles, you can, you know, you get treasure, you collect more cards. Treasures are like basically like relics, like those passive buffs that you collect over time throughout the dungeon. Your characters level up, you can upgrade your cards. There's altars where you can spend skill points and everything like that. But at the end of the whole dungeon, that's it. Like you, your character leaves and you don't keep any of that stuff. So that's all just progression throughout that labyrinth. But what you do get to keep is the gold that you make uh, and some something called blight stones, which I'll make, mention in a second. And with that gold, that's where kind of, you know, it... I think the the hook of this game really comes into play. So there's something called I think I know how it's pronounced, but it's like Sagan or Sagan Gacha. So Gacha, you know, like the whole mobile Gacha thing and and every Gacha pond. But this is basically where you just spend the coins you made in the labyrinth to unlock more cards in the deck. So that means and treasures, which means next time you go on runs, you get more available. There's more cards you can potentially get, and there's five different deck themes with completely different cards in them. So this game has a lot of depth to it. So when it comes to the actual like battles, what it does a little bit differently from other games I've seen, or at least it seems like it's doing it a bit differently, is you've actually got three party members. Um, I could be wrong if you got Slay the Spy. Do you always have the one person? Yep, yeah. From memory, it's just yeah. yeah. So in this game, you've got the three people, and depending on the formation where they're standing in battle... Like, for instance, the person in the front's Vanguard, so they will actually take the most of the damage coming in, but you can swap them at any time. You rotate them, and if they put in the rear guard, then they'll re they'll heal slowly over time. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of strategy about where you're placing your characters. But as obviously the strategy all comes in the, the cards you get and learning, okay, what cards to keep, what cards to get rid of, which ones to upgrade, mm. which ones are the optional strategy, just like your Slay the Spires and other deck builders. And that's not typically a genre of games that that appeals to me a lot but i really did get hooked with the gameplay of this one it's one of the while it's not a traditional jrpg battle system this is probably my favorite exe create battle system ever made and that's crazy to me because wow i was almost expecting call. to be like oh, i'll go through this because i feel like you know i want to complete all the chemco games and everything but <laughs> they they really really impressed me with the way they they implemented it all um but is it is it like I know you haven't played enough of Slay the Spire, but is it kind of like a ripoff of Slay the Spire? There's elements you can definitely say that, but I think they've got they've taken their own like added their own kind of elements to it that makes it fun to play, even if you played like Slay the Spire to death. Mm. And as I said, like this is 
like you're working through a story you're doing side quests you're going exploring the town and everything and speaking to characters this is actually an rpg in its trappings you can make an argument it's not really an rpg in the sense that you're unlocking you know like you're powering your characters up but that whole i mentioned there's blight stones you can get from labyrinth like you can use that to unlock permanent upgrades for instance okay instead of starting with three energy to use on for that turn for on the cards you can now start with four like things like mm. that um so basically like some other you know basic things like look the graphics and music they're they're decent they're pretty standard exe create fair they they do the job the pixel art's pretty nice but it's not gonna you know wow you especially if you played all their games before or any of their games um i actually really like the st the characters and story in this one like I, for me, I tend to, I do eventually, after a while, tend to skip a bunch of story in the, in the EC Creates uh, games. Because, uh, what? Skipping the story. I have mentioned that many times before. To go back to the wait, Kenko wait, Tier list, get, my let friend. Let me get my proper suit on. You need to, you need to go back to, you need to go back to the, excited. <laughs> you need to go back to the Kemco Tier list, my friend. I've said before that there's games where I just end up skipping the story because it hasn't hooked me. Yeah. Um, so I think it's actually some interesting stuff, but there is a lot of story. So if you're not interested in a lot of story, then, it's, you know, the interesting part is they get, actually give you an option you can unlock in the menu to say, I don't want to, I don't care about any of the story. And you can Ooh. just play the game and progress through the story. Every the game, game should so. have that. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, so I guess to wrap it up, look, you know, I, I think this game's an absolute blast. I think if it for anyone that likes deck building kind of games, I think if it drops below twenty dollars, it's really worth a shot. It'll give you a lot of value in it. Mm -hmm. um, anyone that loves EXE Chemco games, um, I think this is a no brainer. I think I really recommend it. Um, but as I said, just you know, just know it is. It is. It's got a lot of story. It's very tropey, like all of their games. But yeah, I think it's one of the best they've made. So. Excellent. Okay. Uh, cool. If you guys are into this genre, um, the one of the games that I played was um, Steam World Quest: Hand of Gilgamesh. Yeah, I want to. I want to get that so, game. When it's yeah, on grab it. Grab it. It's it's totally different than. I mean, it's it's sort of. I think it's by the same developers and set. Not really in the same universe as SteamWorld Dig, and it's a totally different kind of game. But it is exactly that. It's it's a mm. sort of an RPG with card building, beautiful mm. art. SteamWorld Dig always had really beautiful art, um, and I highly recommend it. Yeah, clocked it. Really cool game. Yeah, like it, it's crazy how many games are coming out in this weird genre mm. of like mm. rogue light deck building <laughs> video games. It's mm. so crazy. Yeah, I never thought I'd be into them either, and I'm generally like I'm I'm not just like you but guys. They but are then Whenever addictive. I get into one, yeah, they're really yeah. addictive and they're really fun. They're, to play, they're so. like seriously some of the most addictive games. Mm. Like, like I deleted Slay the Spire after I clocked it because I'm like, yeah. I'll just lose like months on this game, just fine tuning it and doing all this stuff. Yeah, with Slay the Spire, uh, you have different characters, like almost like different classes swinging. Yeah, yeah. So it's I like you're that, more yeah. aggressive, or the I yeah, go back and play Slay the Spire. It's freaking amazing that game. Mm -hmm. I awesome. think actually, Indigo, honestly, like just the gameplay part of this, I think you'd like the gameplay part of this game. So, I just play Slay of the Spire though. That's or like, yeah, know, but this, but this is different enough. I think you'd actually like it. So. Mm. Probably, I'll probably go with Mike's recommendation of Steam World because I like that. Jesus, okay, all right, just ignore me. Fine, <laughs> fine. I can't support Kemco any more than doing a two-hour tier list on this. You haven't even played a single one of their games. <laughs> I refuse. The bunny refuses. All right, let's...